This is the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. I'm Mike Keith, roughly 48 hours away from the NFL draft. Coach Dave McGinnis is here. Rhett Bryan is here. We're going through their position by position by position ratings, doing generally a couple positions per OTP today. Wide receivers, tight ends. Why are we doing this with them? They've studied over 230 players. Coach Mack has talked to people. Rhett was put on the phone with a coach once, and he talked to him. And talked to a running back's mother, according to, to you. Talked to a running back's mother, <laughs> called her, saw her at the Kroger. <laughs> and, uh, but, no, seriously, they have taken so much time and have graded so much, and we wanted to share this with the OT people so that you're ready for draft night. All right, I'm ready to do wide receivers. I'm ready to take your top five wide receivers in the 2024 NFL draft. At number five, Adonai or A.D. Mitchell, Texas. At number four, Brian Thomas Jr., LSU. At number three, Roma Dunze, Washington. Number two, Malik Neighbors, LSU. And number one, Marvin Harrison Jr., Ohio State. All right, Coach Mack. There are people from the start who have wanted to put neighbors, Adunze, over Marvin Harrison Jr. And it's almost as if he's been the favorite for two years to be the number one wide receiver in the 2024 draft. So they're always trying to find somebody to knock him off. As you've done the evaluation with Rhett, why is Marvin Harrison Jr. still your number one? Well, because he's the most complete receiver in, in this league. I mean, he's got he's got what you want. Six three two zero nine. He is a, such a nuanced and such an advanced receiver for where he is. Clearly, you can tell that his dad has worked with him for a long, long time. He's got he can he can run he can run away from you. He's got a huge catch radius. He's a guy that is is knows how to set people up. He's just he's just He's more advanced as a receiver just from a total package. And then plus, he's 6'3", 209 pounds, and he can move. Now, he has done none of the physical testing you know, that, that anybody has seen. He's done none of that physical testing. But if you'll remember, last year, before he was even draft eligible, he did everything at the Ohio State's Pro Day that day. People have known about him. There's a reason that they've had him slotted here because he is just that type that you look at. And the other guys that you talk about, neighbors in the doomsday, really good receivers, mm -hmm. really good receivers. But as you say too, Mike, this time of year and leading up into it, you start to poke holes in guys. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that, I mean, and, and some people, it didn't bother me a bit that he didn't do anything because you know – I think I know what he can do, but you you start – some people will get biased about him because he didn't do the workouts, he didn't do the things, you know, at the combine. But this guy has got a, a long, long library of film that all you got to do is watch him, and then you watch him in person. He's still the number one to me. And, Mike, in any year that he's not in this draft – it probably would be Malik Neighbors and or Roma Dunze. Pick who you like. This is one of those rare wide receiver drafts. And listen, there's a pipeline of them every year because that starts with that seven-on-seven seven stuff and all the way through. But this is a rare year for that. Like There's value in wide receivers throughout this draft. It's probably the deepest position. Oh, would you not it, agree? It, 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 oh, I agree with that so much. This, this, this wide receiver group is special. Special because you're going to be able to find – people because that's the way the game's gone now right right mike i mean that's the way it's gone that's the way it's gone from high school that's the way it's gone from seven on sevens in the summer that's the way it's gone through the, the collegiate game when you really start breaking it down and looking at it you know when i was at the combine sitting up there with the receiver coaches just watching i mean there were there nine guys that ran four threes i mean four threes you don't well, understand what worthy run four two one the four receiver, two one yeah the receiver from texas i mean you're watching things that you know 
normal humans can't do. But to do it in that amount of volume, this is a special group. The thing about Harrison that really jumps out to me is watching him play on TV for Ohio State. You're going, oh, okay, that man, he's he's quick, he's got this, he's got that. It's really impressive. And so you get in your mind that a player is of a certain size when you watch him on TV. And he looks like how he plays, like his dad, 5'11", 6 feet, because he, he plays with quickness and things like that. Then we're standing in the lobby of the hotel at the Combine, and he's there with his dad, and he dwarfs oh. his old man. And, I mean, he's a full 6'3", he's 2'10", 2'15", and you're like, that was the most startling thing to me, Rhett, is to see him, he's a big receiver with just sort of average receiver size skills. You actually took the words out of my mouth because when we saw him that night, I was taken aback. I was like, whoa, he is not his father. Right. I mean. And, and when you say not his father. Well, he's only in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean. it. But that's one of the reasons why his – his skills are so good with the route tree and, and, oh, that, and doing it, those it, things. It has everything to he do with He has that right. lin- lineage in that and, and such a high IQ, but he looks the part. Oh, and, I mean. and look, and when you look at his career, we all saw that Rose Bowl, his first really career start. He had three touchdowns in the Rose Bowl. And you thought, okay, this is nice. He's got the name. He's, he comes back and he just absolutely nails it the next two years as a starter and just – putting up numbers left and right. I mean, what, uh, 28 of his 31 career touchdowns came in the last two years? Well, somebody even made the ridiculous comment, which they make about certain guys, not often. You know, they've said Adrian Peterson could have gone straight from high school to the NFL. And that comment has been made about Marvin Harrison Jr., is that he was the kind of athlete with his training that he was one of the few guys that might have had the ability to do that. And I don't know if that's true or not, but to say that about anybody, it's an incredible compliment about their skill set. Well, yes, I mean, absolutely is. And you can absolutely tell, I mean, there's an advantage if you've got the physical gifts of of having a a, a father that can start teaching you early on oh. about the nuances of what position you're going to play, you can see it. And then there's Malik Neighbors. <laughs> oh, man. He's crazy good. Mike, I believe he's the most explosive player in this draft. In the whole draft. He is electric. Just a shade over six feet, 199, but ran a 438 and almost 200 pounds. We're talking about at his Xavier. Yeah. And we're talking about Xavier Werther doing 421, but he's at 165 65. pounds. He's a track guy, basically. So this guy, 76 uh, inch wing there, 254 in his 20, 156 and two, 42 inch vertical leap, yeah. almost 11 foot broad jump. All right. So, Coach Mack, one of the hardest things I believe that Brian Callahan and and coaches like him are tasked to do on offense is creation of explosive plays. Well, this guy is an X play machine. 34 of his catches in 2023 were 20 yards or more in FBS. Led the nation. 17 were 30 yards or more. Unbelievable. Well, and Red, so if you've got that guy to jumpstart that match, this guy's a playmate. Let's talk about run after the catch too. I mean, oh, that's a boy. that's a whole part. His teammate Brian Thomas from LSU, no slouch in his own right, oh. big and and long and able to make big plays down the field, able to go track the deep ball. Neighbors, on the other hand, is the one who can also track the deep ball. But his run after the catch, I mean, he's got that running back type of skill with the ball in his hands. Just get the ball to him. Get the ball to him. Just get the ball to him because he is – he is, and Rhett, Rhett said it right, he is just explosive. I mean, when he's moving, everybody else looks like they're standing still because he is so sudden, so twitched up. And, as you said, he's got some physicality to him when he's running with it. I mean, just get the ball to him. If you're running away from SEC defensive backs – you're doing something. And you're right, Mike. He's a guy to take a three-yard catch and take it 80. I do like Thomas, though. Oh, Thomas is 6'3". Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thomas is 6'3". And Thomas is 6'3 and ran 4'3". And what did he catch, 17 touchdowns or something crazy like that? Yes, yeah, 17 no, touchdowns. 38 and a half inch vertical jump, 10'6", broad jump. I mean, with a 4'3". I know. That's just – that. That's stupid. 
at 209. That's, at I mean, 209. that's just stupid. I mean, just to think and that he's they're a, athletes like this. And he's a vertical guy. Oh. No, he is a he is a he is a he is a vertical guy. But uh, again, you know, Malik at six foot two hundred pounds is just as we said, get him the ball. I think the sense is that the three receivers at the top, you talk about Harrison, Neighbors, and Adunze, who I want to talk about, are gonna go in the top ten. No doubt. I mean, they may go in the top six. No yes. doubt. Or top seven. Yes. Top eight. But then you got a guy like Thomas who figures to go in the teen. Mm-hmm. And he's just scratched the surface is what people think. And that's happened with a lot of LSU receivers. What did Jefferson go to Minnesota at number 22? 22. <laughs> Worked out okay, didn't it? The thing about Adunze, you mentioned him from Washington. Yeah, let's talk about it. The him. thing that's beautiful about him, he is the best combat catcher in this group. Mm. I mean, it, it, he, he is a lot like D-Hop. He doesn't have to be open to throw it to him. He just doesn't. 6'3", 212, you know, 4'4", four, 5'5", four, guy, 39-inch vertical jump, a 4'03", short shuttle, a 6'8", 8'3", cone, which is just, I mean, that's gadget gadget cutting, Ooh. you know, for a guy that's that's 6'3". But his, his combat catches – He's got a nine and a quarter hand, and they are they are mitts. Uh, th- this is the best combat catcher in this draft. And Adnai Mitchell, who went to Texas after going to Georgia, mm-hmm. played at Cane Ridge his senior year here in high school. I mean, it's yes. an incredible story. He's from Missouri City, Texas. His dad meets Buck Fitzgerald from up here because he just had 25 catches his junior year of high school because they didn't throw a lot at his Texas high school. He comes up here, dominates for Cane Ridge, and then scholarship offers. You know, usually receivers get scholarship offers as a freshman, a sophomore, no, absolutely. a junior. I mean, he didn't really have many scholarship offers till he shows up here and plays in Nashville, and then it's Georgia, it's Tennessee, it's Alabama, everybody. He, he goes to Georgia has a really nice freshman year, catches the go-ahead touchdown pass in the national championship game as a freshman, sophomore year gets hurt, transfers back to the University of Texas, and then 55 catches, 11 for touchdowns this past year. And, I mean, he's another one you wonder because of his lower body and the things that he can do, have we just scratched the surface with Adonai Mitchell? No doubt. No doubt. 39 and a half inch vertical <laughs> jump, 11 4 broad jump. Just ridiculous, ridiculous. Ridiculous explosion. And a 4 3 4 40. So you're right. And Mike, he's, he's a long strider kind of guy. And then when he gets to that top end speed, look out. You know what I like about him the most? One drop in the last two years. Oh, yeah. And he's 6 2. Yeah. He- we we just gone through some incredible athletes. With these. Well, this is like a four by one hundred relay team. I mean, you pick the four out of these five. Well, you could put together three four by one hundreds with this group of receivers. Oh, it's it's yeah. I mean, Lad McConkey is another one. Red, I know he's a favorite of yours. He absolutely is. Uh, I think there are two receivers in this draft that I think are are two of the better polished receivers not named Marvin Harrison Jr. I think Lad McConkey is one of those. And you think, well, Rhett, 30 catches for 478 and two scores. Well, it, it wasn't his show. It was the Brock Bowers show. Well, and the ankle. That's right. He and Brock Bowers both had ankles last year. But this guy played all over the place. Oh, yeah. He's one of those, again, that is a position versatile player in this. All you got to do, go put on the film and l- watch him do what he But I was reminded of it at the combine. That gauntlet drill. He and Ricky Pearsall from Florida, magic. And plus, he's a sudden guy. Mm-hmm. Six seven two three cone. Yeah, I mean, thirty six inch vertical jump, ten four broad jump, uh, four three nine forty one five two two. This guy's a slot nightmare. Three nine seven short but shuttle. But he can play Matt. outside. Too. Sure, he can. I mean, he got deep. The, the greatest compliment that I think he got, or that Lad McConkey gets from his time at Georgia, is he played in the Southeastern Conference. And no one could cover him one on one. Yeah, I mean, because he's so sudden, and he's so nuanced, and he's not a big guy. He's six foot, one hundred eighty-six pounds. Right. But he is going to. And and the other thing is, Mike, he's a concentration catcher. If it gets in his radius, he's going to get it. 
All right, who's your favorite outside the top five coach? I bet this was hard. Ricky Pearsall. Yeah. I love Ricky Pearsall. Uh, 6'1", 189, 4'4", 140. I didn't know he was that fast. Uh, but but you can see it. I mean, he's smooth. 42-inch vertical jump, 10'9", broad jump, 6'6", 4'3", cone, which get – and and Ricky Pearsall played on a Florida team that I know we got Gator fans that, that listen. That he, they weren't real good, and he was the show. He was the show offensively. Got open all the time. Made the catches. Really good football player with a nice skill set. I like Ricky Pearsall. He and Jaden Daniels made good decisions to leave Arizona State and come to SEC schools, didn't they? Probably probably a good decision at a young age made themselves some money too yes sleeper rep brian my sleeper is malik washington virginia really he's a day three guy he's third maybe fourth round in this and you're gonna hear these numbers and you go rat what are you talking about five eight and a half 191 pounds was a four-year guy at northwestern was not used a ton um 44 for 578 and two touchdowns in 2021, 65 for 694 and a touchdown in 2022. Then he hits the transfer portal, goes to Virginia, 110 catches, school record, 1,426 yards receiving, school record, nine touchdowns. I think that is also a school record. Finished his college career with 10 straight 100-yard receiving games, slot receiver, and you're going, okay, five, eight and a half. But he is solid. He is – I'll tell, tell you who he is comp player-wise. He's not exactly this guy because this guy was bigger. But their numbers and their measurables are a lot alike. Steve Smith. He sounds like a guy Kansas City's going to draft and throw quick screens to. And, you know, they keep finding these players. You know, they get them from other teams or they draft them. But that's something that Andy Reid has done so well. And – this is the kind of guy that it, it sounds like ends up there. Well, he's got lower body explosion too, Rev. 10-6 broad jump, 42-and-a-half-inch vertical leap. Coach Mack, your sleeper at the wide receiver position. Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Now, can you really consider him a sleeper? Yeah. Okay. Because these others are so good. <laughs> he's the Yak King. He uh, is the Yak th King. This guy, this guy to me – with a four four seven, but uh, you know, the short shuttle is four two six. You get him the ball in short spaces. First of all, he's five eleven two fifteen. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is packed in there. We saw him, and and one, and he's got nine and an eighth inch hands. He's got huge hands. Uh, as I said, this is a really really generous wide receiver draft. So a guy like Malachi Corley. If he would have come out later in his life, if he'd have been born a little later in life, he might have been a little higher up the draft. A little board. earlier, a little later. Yeah, whatever. And he's the Yak King because he averaged over the last two years at Western Kentucky 9.2 yards after catch. Average. That's crazy. Now, Average. Western Kentucky spreads everybody out. Right. We've seen it. Wow. We know we watch. We've seen that offense. We know it. So the numbers are going to be – but you watch this guy – in traffic, when he's got it, hard to tackle. Yeah, I mean, it's he's such a good player. Oh. I mean, he's another one that you could see in the Miami offense, in the Kansas City offense, in uh, kind of what <laughs> the Jets want to do with Aaron Rodgers right now with those quick throws. And well, what's going to go on here with this offense, yeah, too? Same thing. I'm a big fan. All right, so let's sum up the receiving core. You can get – Great stuff in this draft. You can get really, really good stuff in this draft. And you can probably get players that can help you from pick one to pick 260, basically. 260 is pretty deep, but at least going into the sixth round. Wow. Okay. So like 175 picks, yeah. roughly. Yeah. Well, that's good stuff. All right. Let's talk tight ends. Rep Bryan, you and Coach Mack have a top five of tight ends. Would you mind – Sharing it, please. Without further ado, number five, Ben Sennett, Kansas State. Number four, Theo Johnson, Penn State. Number three, Cade Stover, Ohio State. Number two, Jatavian Sanders, Texas. And number one, Brock Bowers, Georgia. All right. So Brock Bowers worked out last week. Yes. Uh, 
tested well. Apparently his ankle has healed up and he's he's good to go. 241 pounds, 6'3". Coach Mack, who is Brock Bowers, the tight end from Georgia? He's a matchup nightmare in this league for safeties. You are probably going to have to put one of your bigger corners in your match defense or, or play a, a, a defensive scheme because he's going to run away from most safeties. Linebackers are going to have a huge, huge problem. The, the thing about him is he's he understands open spaces, how to get in open spaces. Again, he understands how to get away in man. He's got some – I mean, he ran four four eight. So he's got some sudden acceleration, and he especially has got great acceleration to the ball and then once the ball is in his hands. Uh, he is he is tailor-made for what's going on now in the National Football League, especially with, with tight ends that are, that are split out of the cylinder. He's a matchup problem. And he's a guy you can leave on the field all the time too, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's – He's one of your eleven. He's absolutely, absolutely. He is. He is. Is what people are looking for in that position because what it does. It's not only a very productive guy. I mean, you know, it's a guy that the defenses have to worry about matching up to in every down, every down. And because of where you can line them up. Yes. The value as an explosive offensive weapon. Because you're right. He's what. Mac would call a move piece, a chess piece. Right. You have to account for what he is. And he truly is probably the yak king. I mean, he's eight and a half yards after contact per reception average at Georgia. Come on, man. Yeah, was he at four touchdowns over 70 yards? Yeah, that sounds right. I, I mean, th- that ho- it, it's like he has the craftiness. There's a good word. Of a lot of guys. And, I mean, you think about some of the tight ends we've had here. Uh, Delaney Walker was that kind of fast, like this, like this guy is, maybe a little faster. Frank Wycheck certainly had that crafty part of it. It's like you sort of put those players together, and he'll block, and oh by the way, give him the ball on a fly sweep, and he picks up yardage. He can make people miss. He's got a little bit of shake. Um, there's so many different facets to Bowers. He's one of those guys, and we've, you know, my coaching career, now my broadcasting career with you guys, during the course of a ball game, if you've got a tight end that's just eating your lunch, the first question is, how is he always open? Right. How is he always open? This is one of those guys. Big fan. Big fan of this player. All right, so the rest of the group, starting with Sanders and then Stover and Johnson and then Senate, how, how do you characterize the top tight ends as a group? There's a big drop off, to me. There's a there's a big drop off in, in, in this group. You know, Brock Bowers is is clearly. I mean, he'll be a first round pick. How high he goes depends on, you know, what's going on. But the rest of these guys are are going to be okay players, and and they're different types of players. Like Theo Johnson at Penn State, six six two fifty nine. Now this guy didn't have the numbers at Penn State, but his testing is off the charts. So I think his 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 best value football is ahead of him in the National Football League. But I mean this is a massive man. Same way with Cade Stover at Ohio State. Not a whole lot of you know not a whole lot of targets, but 6'4, 247. Ben Sennett is a guy that to me will play a lot of the 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 12 personnel, H back, move in the backfield, be able to block, be able to run run counter OTs, crunches and stuff. He's a 40 inch vertical, 10 six, 10 six broad jump. He's an athlete, 6'8, 2, 3 cone. But I think he's a really good move piece. But none of these guys, none of these guys, Brock Bowers is different head and shoulders above the rest of them. Yep. Easy head and shoulders to you? Easy. Yeah. Easy. All right. So let's go with favorites. Rhett Bryan, who's your favorite outside the top five? So my favorite is a guy from Colorado State, Dallin Holker. And he is – not the biggest or the fastest or whatever you want to call it, but he's a he's produced. He's a one year starter at Colorado State. He was at BYU, and uh, you know, like a lot of students and student athletes at BYU, he he had a, a mission trip for a couple of years. But it, he had a nice year with Colorado State. He's six three, two forty one, hands ten and a quarter, uh, got about a seventy nine inch wing, four seven eight in the forty, um, ten two broad jump. Uh, the thing about him is the catch radius and his his hands in general. 
uh, 11 catches of 20 plus yards in in the one year that he was with Colorado State. And if you go look at the film, as Coach Mack talks about the red line, we see that red line in practice where DBs and wide receivers are, are battling. He wins that with regularity. In fact, you'll see some uh, film where he has some one-handed catches. And he can work it in the back of the end zone. I like that guy as a day three option. Coach Mack, who's your favorite outside the top five? Oh, Frog. here we go. Frog. We're going to get a TCU guy. Frog. This is Wiley. Perfect. 6'6", 249. Jared Wiley. 4'6", 2 in the 40, 162, 10. 37 vertical jump, 9'10 broad jump, 7'1", 9'3 cone. Frogs were not good this year. This guy, this guy again, he will probably t be taken, I would say, maybe bottom of the second day, It's some maybe somewhere in the third day. Uh, I think he's got pretty decent football ahead of him. 6'6", 249, and, and he's got a nice wingspan. Uh, and Plessy Frog. Who is your sleeper at tight end? Okay, look, I, I know there are a lot of VFLs that really like me because they've told me they do. They do. And I'm going to make them really like me. McAllen Castles from Tennessee. I think I think this this guy, I think, has just touched what, what, what he can do. You start looking. I mean, first of all, you know, he went to Cal, left Cal, go to UC Davis, transfer portal one year. But you look at his numbers. With what, with what, you know, when he's out in space, 6'4", 249, 79-inch uh, uh, wingspan. This is a long dude, 4'6", 840, 37 and a half inch vertical jump, 10'7", broad jump, 7'2", cone. You get him in camp, he'll either be a seventh round or a priority free agent. Get him into camp, be pretty interesting. Put him on a practice squad and try to develop. He's an interesting guy from the standpoint that he gets to Tennessee with a lot of ballyhoo because he's a really good athlete. He played very well early in the year. And I just wondered, was his head swimming? Because he's, he's going from UC Davis to the SEC. But by the end of the year, yes. he started to really make some things happen. And you just wonder, I mean, that's a different game speed, man. Oh. I mean, it's a, you walk into Gainesville, Florida, or Tuscaloosa, or I mean, you've never seen anything like that at UC Davis. You just walk into practice. Right, right. I think that's probably a good one. Because I, I think he's got a chance to continue to take his game. I out. do too, Mike. And I just, you know, and of course, you know, I do that coach to coach show with Doug Matthews, you know, during the season. We're familiar. For 20 weeks. And, and we watch, I watch all the SEC games. This guy, and you're right. You, what, uh, I know you watch a Tennessee game or two. Occasionally. Occasionally. He got better. He did. As the, as the year went on. He got better as the year went on. And, and we all we all know that you know uh, some of those intermediate throws or initial throws uh, you know weren't 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 exactly in Joe Milton's you know that wasn't right. his top shelf throw, but I think this guy as he, as he comes into the National Football he's gonna I, I'd put him on the practice squad, and just develop him. All right, Rhett, who is your sleeper at tight end? He's a hometown sleeper. Oh, you're going to Murfreesboro. Yes, I you? am. You're going to it. <laughs> From you Black guys, Mud High School. You guys are just doing the total cheap pop here to get to get love. Yeah. <laughs> Trey Knox, South Carolina. Started at Arkansas. As a wide receiver. Right. Then added 35 <laughs> pounds of bulk, and he's an inline tight end. But um, 6'3", 240. Good player. Uh, 34 and a quarter inch arm, so an almost 79 inch wing. And uh, for an inline blocker, and he can catch football. I just, I, I like, uh, I like where he's going. I think there's, there's stuff there because he had recently converted to the tight end position. And, and yes, it's, it's a flyer hometown uh, sleeper. I like pick, that. But, but I went like, with the Burrow guy. I like Trey Knox. Yeah, he's a nice player. He is a nice player. He can I, do some good things, and I think people are uh, excited. Maybe a priority free agent or, yeah. or certainly a late day three, you would think. You'd mm -hmm. think. Unless somebody falls in love with a player like this. There are always guys that we think, oh, he's a priority free agent. And he goes in the fifth round because somebody loves him. You know the thing for OT people, and uh, we, you've done the, we've all done the draft for a lot of years. I've been in draft rooms. It, you, it, it amazes you after the draft when you're with a team and you talk to other teams about where guys they had guys on their boards, how their boards were stacked. So different. So different. 
all boards are stacked so different. We'll do our final vertical and horizontal board. It'll be completely different than anything. But that's that's the beauty and the fun of the draft. It really is. Seat Geek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fan can fan. Do Titans it again. fans. Not just one guy. I said do it again. Not Jimmy and Hermitage. I mean, okay. the whole Titans <laughs> so fans. Jimmy and we Hermitage. like Jimmy and Hermitage. Wait, he's great. Yeah, so, but Jimmy we and want, Hermitage. We, we like want Jimmy everybody and Hermitage. to be able to. Let's do it again. To, all right. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So. Titans fans can fan. Beautiful. Now we've hit Bill in Hendersonville as we've well. We've hit everybody. This is good. <laughs> That's good. All right. One more of these to go. The OTP tomorrow, the top five offensive linemen. For Coach Mack, Rep Bryant, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP. <laughs> Welcome to the big show where the legends go. Everybody knows it's our